Have you ever pondered on the significance of the Gazwa Ohad story? Just imagine, a tale that unfolds in the hot desert sands of 7th century Arabia, a narrative that has echoed across the ages. It's a tale of faith, of struggle, of triumph and tragedy. A tale that even after more than 14 centuries holds lessons for us today. Intriguing, isn't it? How could a historic event from so long ago still resonate with us in the present? Stay with us as we delve into this fascinating historical event. The Ghazwa Ohad story unfolds in the 7th century during the early years of Islam. In this era, the Arabian Peninsula was a cauldron of socio-political unrest. The cities of Medina and Mecca, though geographically close, were worlds apart in terms of their beliefs and allegiances. Medina had become a sanctuary for Muslims, who had fled from the persecution in Mecca, their city of origin. Mecca, on the other hand, was the stronghold of the Quraysh, a powerful tribe that staunchly opposed the rise of Islam. To truly understand the depth of the conflict, we must delve into the fabric of society at that time. The Arabian Peninsula was largely tribal, and loyalty to one's tribe was paramount. The Quraysh, being the keepers of the Kaaba, held significant influence and prestige. The rise of Islam, however, threatened to disrupt this balance of power. The Muslims, under the leadership of Prophet Muhammad, sought to spread the message of Islam, a monotheistic faith starkly contrasting with the polytheism prevalent amongst the Quraysh and other tribes. The Quraysh viewed this as a direct threat to their hegemony and the societal order they had maintained for centuries. This simmering tension ignited into a full-blown conflict when the Quraysh launched a series of aggressive measures against the Muslims, culminating in the Battle of Badr, where the Muslims emerged victorious. This unexpected defeat stung the Quraysh's pride and fueled their desire for revenge. Meanwhile, in Medina, the Muslims were not oblivious to the looming threat. Prophet Muhammad, known for his strategic acumen, had already begun preparations to defend the city and its people. The Muslims, though outnumbered, were bolstered by their faith and the sense of unity that had been fostered in Medina. Thus, the stage was set. On one side, the Quraysh, driven by vengeance and the desire to reclaim their lost prestige. On the other, the Muslims, determined to protect their faith and community. The stage was set for a battle that would be remembered throughout history. As dawn broke, the Battle of Ohad began. The air was thick with anticipation, the morning stillness broken by the clanging of swords and the indomitable spirit of the Muslim forces. Their hearts were steadfast, their resolve unshaken, ready to defend their faith and their people. Under the wise leadership of Prophet Muhammad, the Muslims had a strategic advantage. He had astutely placed a group of 50 archers on the hill to keep the enemy's cavalry at bay. Their orders were clear. Hold the position, come what may, a command that would prove to be pivotal in the unfolding events. The battle commenced and the Muslim forces, though outnumbered, fought with a passion that belied their size. Their unity and courage, their unwavering faith, were their greatest weapons. The enemy was taken aback, their numbers dwindling under the relentless onslaught. It seemed victory was within grasp, a testament to the strategic prowess of the Prophet and the indomitable spirit of his followers. But then, a critical error occurred. The archers, witnessing the apparent success and presuming the battle won, abandoned their posts in a bid to gather spoils, disobeying the explicit orders of the Prophet. Their absence created a gaping hole in the Muslim defense, an opportunity the enemy was quick to seize. The consequences of their disobedience were immediate and devastating. The enemy cavalry, no longer held at bay, charged through the unprotected flank, causing havoc among the Muslim ranks. The tide of the battle, once favoring the Muslims, was now tragically turning. It's a stark reminder of the importance of obedience and discipline in the heat of battle. The archers' disobedience not only cost them their strategic advantage, but also changed the course of the battle and indeed, the course of history. But as the battle raged on, the tide would tragically turn. The Battle of Ohad, once a beacon of hope for a decisive victory, was now a battleground of uncertainty and chaos, a poignant testament to the consequences of disobedience and the fickleness of fortunes in war. The Battle of Ohad took a dramatic turn. As the day wore on, a small group of 50 archers, positioned strategically on a hill, became a pivotal part of the unfolding narrative. 
These archers, handpicked by Prophet Muhammad himself, were entrusted with a crucial task, to hold their position and protect the Muslim army's rear, come what may. But as the battle seemed to tilt in favor of the Muslims, a fatal mistake was made. Lured by the spoils of war, a majority of these archers abandoned their posts, disobeying the Prophet's explicit orders. Their desertion left a gaping hole in the Muslim army's defenses, a vulnerability the enemy was quick to exploit. The Meccan cavalry, led by the cunning Khalid Ibn Walid, seized this opportunity. They circled back around, attacking the Muslim army from the rear. The battlefield was thrown into utter chaos. The tables had turned, and the Muslims were now on the defensive. In the midst of this turmoil, a beacon of bravery shone bright, Prophet Muhammad. Despite being wounded, he rallied his companions, standing firm in the face of adversity. His unwavering courage inspired his companions, who formed a protective circle around him. Among them were stalwarts like Saad ibn Abi Waqqas and Talha ibn Ubaidullah, who fought valiantly, repelling wave after wave of enemy attacks. This was indeed the turning point of the Battle of Ohad, a moment that tested the mettle of the Muslim army. It was a lesson in obedience, a testament to the consequences of straying from a strategic plan, and a reminder of the havoc that greed can wreak. But it was also a shining example of the indomitable spirit of Prophet Muhammad and his companions. Despite the setback, the Muslims did not lose their resolve. They remained steadfast, their faith unshaken, their determination undeterred. This was not the end, it was merely a bend in the road, a challenge to rise above, a stepping stone towards future victories. The Battle of Ohad ended, leaving behind profound lessons. As the dust of conflict settled, the toll of the battle became clear. Both sides suffered casualties, a grim reminder of the costs of war. The Muslim community, in particular, was hit hard, not just in terms of the lives lost, but also due to the dent on their morale. Yet, in the face of adversity, they found strength and resilience. This battle, though marked by loss, was not in vain. It served as a crucible, refining the character of the Muslim community and teaching them invaluable lessons. Lessons about unity, obedience, and strategic planning that would shape their future endeavors. Unity, they came to understand, was not just about standing together. It was about acting as one, about moving as a single body, with every part working in harmony with the rest. This unity was their strength, their shield against adversity. And when it faltered, even for a moment, the consequences were dire. Obedience, they learned, was not a matter of convenience, but of necessity. It was about trust, about faith in leadership, and about understanding that every command has a purpose. The archers on the hill learned this the hard way. Their disobedience, driven by a misunderstanding and greed, turned the tide of the battle, showing that disobedience can have far-reaching consequences. Strategic planning, they realized, was not just about preparing for the battle. It was about anticipating the unexpected, about being flexible enough to adapt when things don't go as planned. The battle showed them that even the best laid plans can go awry, and that adapting to these changes is crucial for survival. In the face of defeat, the Muslim community did not crumble. Instead, they learned, they grew, they became stronger. They took the lessons of Ohad to heart, using them to shape their future strategies, to strengthen their resolve, and to forge a community that was more united, more obedient, more prepared than ever before. The Ghazwa Ohad story, though marked by loss, is a testament to resilience and learning. But why does the Ghazwa Ohad story matter? Well, the Ghazwa Ohad isn't just a historical event tucked away in the pages of Islamic history. It's a story that has stood the test of time, echoing lessons of resilience, unity, and strategic planning, which are as relevant today as they were back in the 7th century. The Battle of Ohad serves as a beacon of resilience. It reminds us that even in the face of immense challenges and seemingly insurmountable odds, steadfastness and perseverance can lead to endurance and eventual triumph. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit that refuses to bow down in the face of adversity. Then there's the lesson of unity. The Ghazwa Ohad story underscores the power of unity, showing us that when we stand together, we are stronger. 
It's a timeless reminder that division weakens, but unity empowers. Finally, the Gazwa Ohad story emphasizes the importance of strategic planning. It shows how crucial it is to not only have a plan but to stick to it, no matter the circumstances. It's a lesson about the importance of discipline, foresight, and the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. In essence, the Gazwa Ohad story is more than just a battle. It's a narrative that continues to inspire, teaching us about resilience, unity, and the power of strategic planning. The Gazwa Ohad story is a timeless tale of faith, resilience, and the power of unity.